Today we're going for a little hunt here on Vatablada. Check out the brand new engraved scopes just added to the Hunter Classic. We have two of them here today. First is the 5.5 to 22 power engraved scope, and I just think it was made for the engraved 7x64. It just fits this gun perfectly, and I really think it's going to look nice in trophy shots. There's some really intricate detail we'll check out a little bit later when we get into the sun. As for the other one, we have the engraved 3 to 9 scope, and I really couldn't find a perfect suitor for this because it's almost an emerald green color. You can't see it well when we're not in the sun, but the marble 223 at least kind of fits that coloration. So we actually just had a wood grouse call. It sounded like it was just up there. So maybe we can use the 223 first, and then we'll try to get after some Ibex long range with the 5.5 to 22 power scope. So there is our wood grouse. I had to call him in, but I wanted to make sure we could actually get him in the sunlight. Because I want to be able to take a better look at the scope. I actually like the reticle. I thought it was the Anschutz 3 to 9. That's actually like the one that fits on the 300 and stuff. At least the reticle is. That's kind of cool. I wasn't prepared for that. But as we enter into the sunlight, you can see a lot better. It's kind of like a, an emerald green almost. With the, the black intricate detail all engraved around it. And... I just don't know what would be the perfect gun for it. Probably an engraved option instead of just a standard gun like the 223. But I feel like it does actually kind of fit. So for now, we'll roll with that. And hopefully, as we move up into the mountains, we'll get a chance to use the 7x64 and this scope. Well, it's about 150 meters closer than I was expecting. But we've got our first male Ibex here right about 90 meters out. And I would say, if anything, the 5.5 to 22 power scope is probably overkill, but still, we will go ahead and try to get him down. That's going to have him slide right down the mountain to us, and we'll probably save a trophy shot for hopefully a better sized Ibex. And we are, by the way, going to go down into the southern part of Autobla as well. I've entered three different competitions. They actually require several different weapons, so we'll get to see the scopes on some other guns. And we'll kind of see how that goes, but I'm hoping we can get at least one Ibex with a decent curl for a trophy shot up here, especially because we're going to be taking them with the 7x64, and I just think this gun and scope combo really deserves to be in a trophy shot. Now, this is a little more like it for our range anyway. Look at it like 330 meters, and I'm hoping we can take this shot from prone. As long as we can do that, the 7x64 is pretty flash shooting. And I want to say that's probably the biggest one. So let's put this like right at the top of the shoulders. And that dropped it. It actually looked like it hit it maybe through the neck. But not a bad deal. And obviously we're not exactly trying to test the scope out. But just getting to use it and get to see the different actual visuals on it. And I really think it's going to look nice with a number of guns. I was thinking like the engraved 30R would probably work. Really any engraved gun that's got like wooden stock and gold detail. And there's a number of them, but I don't know if there's any better combo than this. One thing's for sure, they definitely pair nice together for an Ibex hunt. That was 327 meters, right in the middle of the neck. Which is effectively what we're going for, aiming at the top of the shoulder blades at that kind of range. That's probably the farthest we've ever killed an Ibex at, so that's pretty cool. But we're going to work our way over to kind of the eastern side of this mountain range. Usually there's a lot of Ibex there, and... Like I said, just I'd love to get one with a good curl. That ought to do the trick. That's a pretty good looking Ibex. Before we just take that shot, let's see if we can get an estimate. We may have even spooked him when we shot that last one. Not the darkest possible horns, but 225 to 285. And again, kind of getting to actually make use of this big scope. 240 meters out. I think we'll let him go ahead and stop. The angle is just horrible. Maybe we can kind of do that same thing, though, put it up towards the shoulders. Don't know what we hit, but I can say the 7.64 is powerful enough to take down an Ibex, even with a poor hit, so we'll keep an eye on him. I don't want him to go up that cliff, though, so just in case, let's get another round chambered here. And if he ends up stopping up there, we may hit him again, because I guess there's a chance he could get up top and then die and not slide down. Don't know where he went already, though. Maybe just out of render? In fact, he's dead right here at the base of the steepest part of the mountain. And that might make for an epic trophy shot. I'd love to get, like, down to here. 
which I don't know if we're quite going to be able to do, but we can basically overlook all of Vatablaw. But as for the score, I'm thinking that guy's going to be pretty decent. Just a body shot at 250, but a 247 score, definitely not huge, but decent enough definitely for a photo. So let's see what we can make work up here. I'm going to say this is about as good as we're going to do. I wanted to be able to show off the scope. Unfortunately, the sun is the exact opposite direction as we'd want to have the trophy shot overlooking all of Outlaw, but that actually works out pretty good. We can head down to the southern part. We can try the scopes on a couple different weapons and maybe see if we can place in a competition with a pretty sleek looking gun. So we're entered into three different competitions. One is for biggest Red Fox, no weapon requirement. We'll stick with the 223 for that. The other two are biggest Red Deer with the 308. This one, because we can't put the 5.5 to 22 power scope on, is pretty much our only option. And the green scope with the wood grain isn't the worst. The other competition is biggest Brown Bear with the 8x57. And I just didn't like this scope on the regular 8x57, the orange camo one. And it actually kind of looks okay on the Christmas one. I can't believe that we're bringing this thing on a hunt in May, but here we are and it kind of works. He's definitely not a competition winner, but a decent Red Fox to start out with down south here. And we're going to get to use the 223 again. It feels so weird to even use the 223 with this reticle, but I like it. I think it's going to be good for smaller targets like a fox, especially in the brush where you can't really see it as well. It really helps to just kind of get dialed in and focus on where you need to shoot, but I don't know. I think it actually kind of works. It's growing on me. I still want to find like a good engraved gun to put that scope on and, and have it look good. And if you guys have found a cool combo, let me know in the comments below, because as we move forward in the Let's Go Trophy Hunt series, maybe that's something else we can kind of incorporate some of the engraved guns to have those scopes on. But as for this guy, he is a 10.5 weight. Not bad. 23 score with a hard shot, as I said, really helps with that reticle. And eh, quite possibly, oh, it's the highest scoring female fox. <laughs> Just remember that. So that's relevant. And I guess kind of good that that guy wasn't that big then. We might just have a shot here. That red deer looks really good. And before we do shoot it, we'll make sure we look at the competition rules. I want to say that should be a 260 or 270. Biggest red deer we've seen in a long time. 255 to 280 estimate. So we'll get in close. Like I said, I'll make sure that we do everything right for the comp because we may have a chance for our first red deer trophy in years. And luckily, it's pretty straightforward. We just need the highest scoring red deer with the 308 rifle. So if we just get up to this edge where we can go prone, maybe even on this rock, we'll go ahead and go for that shot. Probably not the best that we just spooked that roe deer. So we'll speed this along before he goes anywhere. Still broadside, which is going to help. The roe deer luckily is kind of going left. This just feels so odd. This gun and reticle combo. But... Just like the 7x64 and the 5.5 to 22 power scope, it's a pretty deadly combo. And I mean, there's so much that goes into the score for a red deer, but I think that frame is particularly wide set. So hopefully he's a good one. We shall soon find out. Double lunged him at 168 meters. He is a 269.7 score. As of now, that's going to put us in first place, which is pretty darn cool. It's been a while. We've done a bunch of Valdebois hunts literally going for red deer and trying to place in a red deer comp and i don't think we topped 250 in any of those hunts and now today we're just kind of here checking out the new scopes and we've got a chance to go top three in a red deer comp it's tough to really show the scope off but i think this trophy shot pose at least kind of makes it a little more clear and honestly shows off the red deer rack really nicely it's just good to get a big one again we used to just really without that much difficulty get 260 or 270 plus red deer almost any time we came to Vatabaw and that's just not been the case as of late so that was pretty cool just to see one and of course to take it with the new scope on the 308 added just a little extra something special not gonna need a scope at that range but we'll use one anyway just to make the most of it but he was going around to the left and I was gonna try to sneak up there but I guess he changed his mind and obviously that's not going to improve our placement, but another actually kind of decent stag, right around the same weight range, but a 206 score. 
Definitely not going to compete with a nearly 270, but good to get some solid ones. That's actually kind of cool. Got a gold fur type brown bear here that's not bad size, 23 to 26. Definitely not going to win any competitions, but we do get to use this semi-abomination. I really think the colors kind of work, but if he'll turn back broadside, which he is at least kind of doing, we'll see if we can get a vital hit on it. That killed him so fast. Like, he really dropped especially fast. I think it was maybe a hard shot. Because what typically happens is they almost kind of tip over on their side, but he just instantly face planted. So I got to think there was something that caused that. He was still walking, but just double lung. Instantly killed him there with the 8x57 23 score. We shot one in maybe our last foul ball hunt that was maybe in that range. So unfortunately towards the lower end. And actually, as we head up through here, brown bear may be the last thing we'll shoot. I did fill the barrels today, but they're actually not ready to be hunted. I had planned on, if we didn't get anything good, maybe coming back for another round and looking for them. But with our red deer and solid ibex, I don't think we'll do that, but we'll at least go and visit the north one just in case there's anything hanging around. Well, unfortunately, not much going on at the northern end of the river, and I thought rather than just fast traveling back onto the river somewhere, we'd try a spot that we hadn't hunted for ibex. And where I went to is this little spot down here in the far south end of the map. It's a really good area, and typically when we fast travel here, we do find a big one, but in this case, this is the only male I see. Probably want to go a little extra high, because the 8x57 is not as flat shooting as the 7x64. We'll go ahead and mark that before we lose it. And then just to ensure, it doesn't look like the mountains are crawling with Ibex, so I think we probably got the only one here. But honestly, I'm really excited about the Red Deer and our chances at getting top three in that competition. I'd love to finally get a Red Deer competition trophy crossed off the list, as we keep on working towards getting one competition trophy for each species in the game. And as long as we've tried for Red Deer, and as many times as we've come to Vatabois, to finally be in the top three and holding first at the moment is pretty exciting. And I don't know, I'm not sure if this is going to be Saturday's video or Thursday's video, so I may or may not know if we've placed by the time this video comes out. If so, the trophy will be on screen or text that we didn't, I suppose, will be there if that's the case. But we'll find out when we get to that point. And on that note, that's going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.